Hello everyone, Toonchi here, Cartoonchi if you so please. Apologies for taking a lot of breaks recently, I spent most of my time away from YouTube planning out more YouTube videos, so try to pretend that massive upload gap isn't there. Just like how I convinced myself to not feel crushingly depressed when a project I poured my heart into underperforms. Which brings us to the topic of today's video, The Loud House is a show that even my closest friends are getting sick of me talking about. I'll stop beating this dead horse when it stops spitting out money, is what I'd be saying if YouTube didn't revoke my monetization over my passport expiring. But unfortunately for Mrs. Wobblefrack, I, regardless of cash, am driven to watch free full episodes of a live action kid show purely for the clout gain. The doctor said I should stop taking Benadryl before I am considered criminally insane. But down in the underworld, we block out the haters. For real, for real. On to the topic at hand. The Loud House is a popular Nickelodeon show that fell off, I made a terrible video on its decline, 1 million views later, and I'm talking about its constant stream of new content outside of the main show itself. I haven't watched it since that original video, but I have seen the official Loud House movie, and the live action Christmas movie that both released last year, oh my god, safe to say, shit was mid. But the live action Christmas movie in particular was far more interesting as a study piece into a modern tragedy. Add a green filter and some dramatic music to Lincoln's insane behaviour and you'd have a pretty good Oscar contender, but it was also shortly announced after that that not only was The Loud House getting a seventh season, there would also be an all new live action TV series adaptation running at the same time, creatively titled The Really Loud House, and would retain the cast from the Christmas movie. Immediately, I was confused, and so was everyone else. Why are you running the original show at the same time as a live action recreation? This isn't a fairly odd scenario, where the original show was long dead before it was brought into the world with the grace of a thermonuclear mushroom cloud. It was just the same show, but in live action, running at the same time is the original. Nickelodeon have always been greedy, especially with The Loud House, with, uh, varying results after they cancelled the Cleveland show spin-off that no one watched, but this was quite an anomaly. An an anom- an anomaly- <laughs> An anomaly I promised myself I would not watch until no one watched my amphibia video, so my hand has now been forced. I sat down and watched the three episodes that are currently out, because yes, there are going to be more of these. A whole season, in fact. And if they're anything like the episodes that I've seen, then... Oh boy. <laughs> White man has been here. How can you tell? Child exploitation. This was precisely what I feared was going to happen when this show got real, by the way. I firmly believe that no live-action showrunner at Nick should be allowed 500 feet away from a school zone. Extend that to the fan base as well while you're at it. Keep bumbling. I'm not calling anyone anything here, but a rule of thumb is that if your live action show features child actors doing rather humiliating, fetishy shit, then you may need to be incarcerated. And again, for the people who think it's weird to rip into a kid show, no one has any issue when people do it to other kid shows of the same age demographic, yet Loud House keeps getting slapped with the This Is For Babies sticker. If it's fun to rip into, then I'll rip into it. Without further ado, on to the show itself. <laughs> I'll be discussing all three episodes so far as one subject instead of going episode by episode, because this show is pretty much a death by a thousand cuts scenario. It's true that future episodes could be better or even worse, but <laughs> I'm not watching this show again after this. Let's get some positives out of the way actually. Just like with the Christmas movie, I really like the set design and the dedication to making everything look as accurate to the actual cartoon as possible. Costume design is on point, props are on point, the rooms are one-to-one -one with their cartoon counterparts. Visually, outside of some awful CGI, the show is solid and everyone at least looks like they're having fun here. Once again, fuck you if you bully the child actors or their appearances. I will be poking fun at some of the performances here though because they're painfully obnoxious, which is not anyone's fault here. Apart from a few outliers, all of the cast members from the Christmas movie make their return, including Wolfgang Schaffer as Lincoln Loud, although I'm not sure why he's still here after the Christmas movie caused him to go bald. That's not a joke by the way, in the behind the scenes for this show they revealed that Sheffer is just wearing a wig in this show, because the white dye they gave him in the Christmas movie caused his hair to start thinning out. Good job, guys. Sons of cunts. Wait, I don't know why I heard my hair. Cool fun fact. Dye didn't work. My hair kind of fell out. So I definitely prefer the wig to losing my hair. I don't know, man. Personally, I'd sue. Okay, praising time is over. Time for me to start being a dickhead. Today. Oh look, it's Satan. Thankfully, Lincoln is toned down a lot more than he was in the Christmas movie where he regularly engaged in domestic terrorism. He's just an incredibly bratty, twatty, annoying child now, which is definitely more in line with his cartoon counterpart. It's just a shame that that also sucks. You'll notice right away that the show's comedy is, well... I have a butt pimple. It makes me want to stab. It's a combination of trying to be hip, trying to be self-aware, and trying to be cartoony with just a touch of intentional cringe comedy, filling out all the requirements for being a CIA torture device. I always knew it wasn't a coincidence for this show to be made during a major war. It's good to see that psychological warfare is back on the menu. 
well, more like psychological lobotomy. The basic plot synopsis for episode 1 I can provide is that Lincoln and Clyde want to watch Andrew Tate at midnight to obtain a promo code that gets them a Macho Man badge. I'm surprised there's still fans of Rip Hardcore after he spent the last 20 minutes of the Christmas movie trying to kill them, but I'm guessing the stress is caused early onset dementia. Badges are not gender specific, Rip Hardcore isn't just super ripped, he's super woke. Um, hello? Base, Base department? department? I mean no foul to the guy who played him in the movie, but I think that Rip Hardcore was definitely bigoted. Lincoln Loud, what color is your boot? Gossy. I'll personally take Trans LA Hardcore any day, extremely based. There's nothing cooler than a badge. That's why I want to join the FBI as a badge maker. Why is Clyde a fed? Fuck, this really is a CIA torture device, isn't it? It appears Clyde portraying the working class was one of the legendary seven twists. It also seems they're still being lazy with audio because I shit v not, lad. I recognized a line being reused from the Christmas movie. Number two. This is picking that nit rather hard, I apologize, but I think it speaks volumes as to just how much care actually goes into the series outside of the visuals. The only thing left to do is prepare the- God, it never ends. Well, at least Lincoln isn't as annoying as he used to be. Everyone goes to bed before midnight, not one minute later. No! Never mind. This isn't fair, it's Lucy's fault! Why should we have to suffer? You privileged little shit. How many 11 year olds get to stay up past midnight? Fuck, past 9 p.m. if they're lucky. So basically, because Lucy has been staying awake for three days straight, the parents are only now enforcing a midnight curfew on their family of 10 kids under the age of 18. You're not very good at this. This of course flies in the face of Lincoln's plans, especially because Lynn Sr. is celebrating his half-birthday on the day of the Andrew Tate stream. So the rest of the episode then consists of Lincoln and Clyde helping out the Loud Sisters in a series of painfully unfunny skits. Bobby, I literally love that you never litter. If you literally ever litter, you pick it up later, which is literally not litter. So they'll all cover for him at the celebration while he stays at home to watch TV. Ignoring the fact that Lincoln is a little shit for this, this episode is just incredibly weird. Like, there's no real way I can describe this, but there's this distinct feeling of discomfort that I get from watching this show. I don't know if it's the show's over-reliance on cringe comedy, how uncanny it is to see these cartoon characters in live action, their performances, or what, but it's a uniquely painful experience that I haven't had anything come close to for a long time. Have a great night, and if you're driving home, please take a car. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is... So funny. I'll be using that clip from now on, counting it. I think it's more or less a problem of Nickelodeon sitcoms in general. We as a society are long past the age of calling things cringe as a critique. But that's the only word I have to describe how uncomfortable it is to watch this. I also can't tell if continuity errors are supposed to be a part of the joke, but they come off as more of a mistake. I will give the show some credit though. Lynn Senior is pretty funny. I actually look forward to any scene he's in because he's the best part of the show. I am not a good mechanic! But everything else is just crossing in and out of uncanny, cringe, and that is not my fetish, bitch! Let's get the elephant in the room shot and buried. I made this tweet a few days ago expressing my overall disgust with some of the fetishy content present in this series, which is unfortunately a problem as old as Nickelodeon itself. Everyone knows about Dan Schneider's antics and I don't want to go straight up accusatory on the people behind this, but it gets to a point where you really have to consider, are they thinking about what's being shown on screen or is this intentional? This will all make sense once we get to the third episode, but keep this in mind for now. A general rule of thumb is that when creating a piece of children's entertainment that can be enjoyed by the whole family, it's customary to not cross the line of weirdo shit for a slapstick gag, especially if it involves real children. It's just fucking weird. For the time being, we're stuck at episode one and for Nickelodeon, standards, there have certainly been worse sitcoms than this. But at that point, you're making a judgement of character based on how many war crimes someone has committed. I think if 90% of your cast causes the average person to develop suicidal thoughts upon speaking, don't. Let me give you what I got so far. I'm on blog TV with my fucking hands up! Let's be real, she would be incredibly racist. I may be a genius, Lola. But what do you think's gonna happen when Dad notices you're not at his party? I didn't think about that. Unlucky, keep Wait, bumbling, no, motherfucker. No, no, no. There's also a lot of unintentionally funny stuff here too, like this melodramatic breakdown Lincoln has after rolling a negative 20 for his perception check, then like 10 seconds later he rubs two brain cells together and says, hey, let's disguise the robot. Because yes, that's also a plot point. Lisa creates a robot and they disguise it as Lincoln, and this is a scene that really benefits from being a silly cartoon. Because when written in a real setting, you start to realize just how many of these characters have a chromosomal disorder. Like you get the awkward scene of the fake saying something sus 
where you get the long pause before the other character responds, usually along the lines of, wow, you're pretty smart actually, but I swear this sequence lasts like 40 seconds and it goes from being intentional cringe comedy to unintentional hilarity as they zoom in on Lin's stupid fucking face while he waits for his brain to load Internet Explorer. Probably also a good time to mention that the pacing is absolutely insane. The Loud House's main trademark is its fast pacing, but the high energy of the cartoon just feels off in a live action show that isn't as expressive as a cartoon. I do think that out of all of Nickelodeon's cartoons, the Loud House does have the highest likelihood of working in a live action setting given how grounded it usually is, or how it used to be before the dragons and magic stones. God, that movie really did exist, didn't it? But it's a likelihood, not a certainty. And as we can see here, the show is the opposite of certain. I'll give them this though, Lynn Senior's whole speech about why he celebrates his half birthday was actually sort of touching. Not kidding, Brian Stepanek is genuinely a good actor and he really delivers with his comedic lines and his heartfelt ones. It's just a shame that Lincoln's response is to not tell him the truth of his actions, but instead to say that they were all lying to him about Lincoln just staying at home, because he was actually just planning his real celebration and I'm sorry? You little fuck. You... Fuff. At least you admitted you were wrong in the Christmas special, here you just lied to your parents. Twice. No repercussions, and despite it being a sweet thing to do, it kind of undercuts the message they're trying to teach. I got no quarrel with a kid show not teaching morals, but when they attempt to and fail, it's honestly kind of pathetic. Overall, episode 1 isn't the worst thing ever, but it's still not very good and highlights a lot of issues with Nick's live action productions. Also, this song is SHIT, SHUT UP! Episode 2 is an equal disaster on all fronts, but despite that, this episode actually had several moments that made me laugh. All of which came from Brian Stepanek as Lynn Sr., who was trying his hardest to carry the episode with every fiber of his being. There's one thing I'm proud of, is the fact that I can keep track of all my kids. Where are all my kids? I know where Lily is. Great! She's in another dimension. <gasps> Great. The jokes themselves aren't even that good, but delivery is pretty decent and it makes him the main part of the episode I look forward to seeing when the focus wasn't on the sisters or on the main plot involving Lincoln and Clyde. Lincoln tries to get out of doing chores by doing a terrible job, only for Clyde to accidentally snitch on him. And this results in them being put on lawn mowing duty, where they reenact Grand Theft Auto and get arrested- wait, wait, what the fuck? What kind of chainsaw man pacing is this? Things just sort of happen in this show. Like, there are major escalations of the absolute weirdest shit possible and it really just melts the mind. I have a butt pimple. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. It begins with trying to get out of chores, only for Lincoln and Clyde to get wrapped up in police work and end up arresting a well-known gang of cannibals. He ground up Pablo's entire gang into a milkshake and drank them. It's true. They were all- What is happening? Every person in this episode besides the Loud family just looks like they want to pack up and go home. That works for a lot of the episodes actually. No one outside the Loud family looks like they want to be here. And even for the people that do look like they're having fun, again besides Brian Stepanek, they're giving borderline obnoxious performances that I guess are their best efforts with the monstrosity of a script they've been given. There isn't a whole lot to say about episode 2 because it's fairly simple. The scenes involving Lynn Senior are kind of funny and everything else brings me immeasurable pain. If the show was just like this, some below average sitcom from Nickelodeon, then I could put up with it. But then there's episode 3. I've lost a lot of butt pimples in my day. That one fought back. With that overnight, you'll be good as new in the morning. Who made this and how do I legally assassinate them? If episode 2 was the episode to showcase a few of the show's merits, episode 3 is the point where they conform to basically every negative preconceived notion people have about Nickelodeon sitcoms. It is genuinely one of the most uncomfortable episodes of television I have ever witnessed, and I think it should be classified as a constitutional outrage. You know those stories where a character embarrasses themselves in front of the entire school or just a large group of people and is then put through absolute hell for the next 10 to 20 minutes? Yeah, th this is one of those. However, everything is somehow worse by about 11 trillion. The episode features the arrival of a new girl to Lincoln School that he falls for. You'd think you could predict where this goes, but oh my god, it's a fucking doozy. Lincoln School has their own news team, and every time someone new arrives in school, there's a mandatory interview that they show to the entire school. First of all, massive dig move if the person in question was incredibly anxious or self-conscious. Second of all, Lincoln zones out as she's talking, responding to her with very insensitive comments that already further embarrasses himself. And then, out of nowhere, after about five seconds of nothing, I have a butt pimple. Lincoln has a b I'm not even gonna dignify that. And it's brought up as an offhand joke earlier in the episode, so you're like, oh, so they're gonna bring it up as a running gag. I get that, even if it's not even funny. You don't just expect him to randomly blurt it out for no reason. Like, you do you do stupid things under pressure, I get that. But like, 
Jesus. Talk about forcing a conflict. So this episode went from being about Lincoln's new love interest to being about him going into hiding because he's become a laughingstock, including to his own siblings, which, fuck you. I believe there was a season one episode where Lincoln embarrasses his sisters on the internet and they were mad at him. So in response, he embarrassed himself and they understood that he tried to make things right. It, it, it's morally a bit dubious, but you can see where things may be a tad inconsistent here, right? Like this isn't the animated series and Loud House is not exactly renowned for continuity, but these are are the same characters, so logically you'd expect them to act the same, especially if they insensitively torment Lincoln with his humiliation. Like, Christ, the entire episode is just against the poor guy, and Lincoln's not exactly a likeable character, terrorist and all that, but he didn't do anything morally wrong in this episode, I don't think. You expect the school to be against him, but fuck his own family? Friends even? We then receive about 15 seconds of the girl showing Lincoln a Sparta remix of his humiliation through TikTok. No, that's not a setup for an ironic joke, that's actually played completely straight. Great. There's like several layers of unfunniness to this. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. There's also this really weird subplot involving the parents and not even Stepanek can save this. Whoever has stomach issues, get your farts out now. Gosh, that is I'm gonna start keeping a tally for everything remotely fetishy in this show at this point. There's far too many coincidences for them to just be one-off gags. It's also during this subplot where Lynn and Rita decide that they need a family doctor as they don't want to try their luck at affording healthcare in today's economy. And we then get an entire 10 second slow motion sequence with a romantic song playing in the background for the most 5 out of 10 man I have ever seen in my life, while Lynn and Rita presumably fall in love with him. Like, hey I'm not gonna judge, but like... Better standards, maybe? Like, they spend the rest of the episode awkwardly trying to get him to be their doctor, Rita channels her family's lineage of incest to use the least charming southern accent I've ever heard. Yes, I said lineage of incest. In the Loud House movie, all of the Loud's ancestors died as children during the medieval era, a time where royal inbreeding was standard practice. So what do you imply from that? The Loud's ancestors just casually hooking up with men possibly over a decade older than them? Or inbreeding? Yeah, when you look at those interpretations, this little oversight is a tad bit yikes. The whole episode is the definition of uncomfortable. It's almost the same vibes I got from Arnold Portrays Iggy, but with more of a comedic edge to it. In massive quotations, of course. There is then a scene where Lincoln's pants are stripped down so the doctor can wrangle his butt pimple. You are fucking sick. And right after this, the camera pans all the way down, puts Lincoln's ass front and center to screen. I don't know if I can even describe this without being flagged. This is up there for one of the most shameful, uncomfortable fucking moments I have ever seen from a children's show. This wouldn't be as bad if it were animated, plenty of cartoon characters are animated in their undies after all, but this is a real child, a child actor. Wearing a fucking d oh my god! I don't want to insinuate anything about the people behind the show. They could have just simply thought it was funny, but I personally think including fart gags, brutal humiliation, and this in a kids show and acting it out with real people is indescribably careless, especially given the kind of fans this franchise notoriously has. If you don't think this is weird, at least. There is something wrong with you. Dan Schneider can get away with his blatant foot fetish on every show he's worked on for Nick for decades. I'd rather not let stuff like this slip by personally, even if I'm wrong. God, it gets worse. I fucking hate all of you. Oh, and this pic of Lincoln at the door also gets shared at the round the school. Like, holy god, do you, how do you get away with half of this stuff? We then get a scene where Mr. Beast invites Lincoln onto his sitcom to talk about his humiliation. No, this is not a setup for an ironic joke, this is played completely straight. He gets asked to be here to improve his image, only to realize he's just being brought on to get embarrassed more. Luckily, Lincoln uses this opportunity to give the generic speech of not judging people for who they are, and like, good message and all, like, it's just severely undercut by how shit everything else is. By the way, I thought these little talk shows and interviews were for the school, but apparently the dilemma of this preteen boy wearing a fucking diaper is being watched by Times Square and the United Nations. This is so bizarre, and I'm more so laughing at the low production value rather than the idea itself. I love that they just grabbed a random crowd cheering green screen from YouTube, slapped it onto a video of Times Square with no foot put into the perspective. I don't expect good effects from Nickelodeon, but you couldn't even be bothered to pay a bunch of extras to just start cheering at the screens. Oh, and after all of that, Lincoln gets cucked at the end by Mr. Beast and spends the rest of his day in a grave with the rest of his family, where they shall never be unearthed ever again.
I'm done. I am never touching this franchise again. Unless I find the idea funny. Hope you enjoyed. I don't care that there are going to be more episodes after this. I am never touching this again. Hope you will have a good evening. And if you're under the age of 18, interested in an acting career, and get spotted by a Nickelodeon executive, run.